The designers of the Dodge Stratus. Coverage of the winter storm. Lots of schools have checked in tonight. We'll run down the complete list of school closings and cancellations. And we'll take you along for the uh, ride on the main roads and show you some of the side streets as well. Joe has the complete forecast next on Action News. Watched by more people than any other network. ABC. WTAE TV Pittsburgh. Right now, Channel 4 Action News is everywhere. Tonight we're live. Thousands of people snowed in 24 hours after the storm. Tonight, the details, five people in our area are dead because they were digging out. Tonight, the latest school closings. Lots of kids will have another day to play. Tonight's big story, clearing the way so we can get to work in the morning. Good evening, everyone. Most stores, most offices will be open in the morning. But lots of schools will be closed. Check the bottom of your screen for the complete list of cancellations and delays. Road crews working round the clock report the major highways are clear of snow. You can see for yourself, this is Interstate 279. No real problems for motorists tonight. Same story on the Parkway West. This video was shot near Crafton tonight. Police say it's slow going in spots, but nothing to worry about. Parkway East now. Plows pushed all the snow away from the Squirrel Hill Tunnel, so no trouble getting in or out of the city. But you want to go east on the turnpike, forget it. The farthest you could go is New Stanton, Westmoreland County. Dozens of trucks are parked in a row, waiting for the turnpike to finally reopen. The turnpike is closed from New Stanton East to the New Jersey border. The earliest it will reopen, Tuesday at 6 a.m. That's if we don't get any more snow. Yeah, perish the thought. Let's get to Joe in the Weather Center. Joe. Well, for those who may be traveling uh, over the next 24-hour period, and if you're traveling east especially, you can see some of the snowfall amounts. Cleveland, Erie, zero, three inches up at Youngstown. So if you're traveling west or north, not a problem tomorrow. But if you're driving east or flying east, check with the air carrier or check with the uh, highway to, uh, condition, to see, get the uh, conditions moving eastward. Harrisburg had 22 inches, 20 in the city. Uh, Philadelphia up to 30, uh, 25 through New York. And Boston, 12. These airports are still closed. Washington, D.C., 25. Charleston, West Virginia, they had 19 in Morgantown, 20 inches. So traveling tomorrow, especially south and east, could still be a problem. We'll have details later on the forecast. Now here's Sally. All right, thanks, Joe. Tonight, PennDOT and the city are asking for your patience. The road warriors are working double time, overtime, trying to clear the roads and the bridges. They know a lot of people living on secondary streets are stuck because of all the snow. They're trying to get to you just as fast as they can but they can't promise they will get to you by morning. That's not what the folks living in Beach you want to hear. This car parked on Fallowfield Avenue is surrounded by snow, a lot more like it. It's worse in Wilkinsburg. These roads are next to impassable, more than a foot of snow everywhere. And in Millvale, there are still some rough spots. Their road situation is unique. Sheila Highland is live to explain. Sheila. Well, Sally, most of the roads that we saw tonight throughout the North Hills did look pretty good. Here in Millvale, you see these piles of snow everywhere you look on the roads. The problem is some of that snow is still on the side streets, and that makes traveling a little tricky. This man took to plowing this Millvale street with a shovel. He doesn't blame the plow crews. Like many residents here, they blame the steep, narrow, and windy roads in Millvale that trap the snow. As this mound proves, there's just nowhere to put it all. You can go only go one person down the street, and when they plow it, you get sucked into the side. So if you go, try and fit two people on the street, you can forget it. Here on Lippert Street, for instance, you can forget about getting around without four-wheel drive. Well, it's really hard getting up and down here, you know, because there's cars parked on both sides, and then it's slippy. We usually get plowed last because it's the very worst road in Millville, and uh, you slide a lot, so they usually plow us last. And uh, we didn't even get salted. Plows have buried cars up and down the streets in Millvale. At least now, the side roads are passable. But some residents say the plows should come back to finish the job they started. They used to do a really good job. Um, I, don't, I don't know what's happened. Last year, they were there all the time. They just didn't do a good job. Even the main roads still are pretty sloppy. We called Millvale officials to comment on the road situation, and they said to call back tomorrow morning. By the way, some of the residents we talked to here in Millvale say the plow crews are doing a pretty good job, and they say given the terrain here in Millvale, this is the best you can expect when you get a foot or so of snow. Reporting live from Millvale, I'm Sheila Highland. 
There's some very narrow, windy streets there, sure too. Millvale's not alone trying to move the massive amounts of snow. Let's check the live picture from Brookline. Piles of snow everywhere. And Andy Pearson is also about there on the Brookline beat. Andy. Well, Scott, we found the uh, situation here in the south pretty good for uh, secondary roads even. Most of them were plowed. We even found some uh, alleys that were plowed. But, uh, you know, it's really hard going for a lot of people around here. And digging out for tomorrow, it'll be crucial for them to get to work tomorrow morning. When it comes to hilly neighborhoods, there are two kinds of snow situations. The plowed and the unplowed. The stuck and the hopefully unstuck. Oh, hopefully I'll make it once I get out on the main roads. I should make it. Think about moving, looking for a house on a flat surface? <laughs> well, it wouldn't be a bad idea. <laughs> Most of these people have been shoveling all day with one goal in mind, freedom. Still too much snow, you know. All day we, uh, we shoveling. All day. Others have been shoveling all day and calling all day for a city plow. John Cagney says he's been calling for 12 hours. There's always going to be a problem. Yeah, you know, there's no question about it when you get this kind of a snow. But we have to, I mean, we pay taxes, so we should be able to get out and go to work, and that's my problem. Minutes later, okay. two city trucks hit his street while we talk. Are they happy? Am I happy? No. No, well, what not? you still have here is the corner. You cannot come out here and make the left-hand turn. Out here from Wehrman on the Hobson. They just made it worse. It's a hit-and-miss business when it comes to snow. But the plows have made most people in this neighborhood very happy. <laughs> well, the good news is the uh, Public Works Department is taking requests all night. If you need your uh, street plowed before rush hour tomorrow morning, there still are some secondary roads in need of uh, some sore attention here on the uh, south side. But uh, hopefully, they have 67,000 streets they say they have to plow. And of course, they don't usually get that the first time. So be patient. Hopefully, they'll be there. There are some delays. Reporting live in Brookline, Andy Pearson, Channel 4 Action News. OK, Andy, thank you. Now, if you do plan on getting up early to dig your car out or clear that walkway, do take care. Five people in our viewing area died today while shoveling snow, moving lots of heavy, wet snow can put a severe strain on your heart. In Westmoreland County, three men, all over 65, suffered heart attacks while shoveling snow. Here in Allegheny County, a 75-year-old man died clearing the way of snow. And one case in Washington County, again, a man died shoveling snow. Another concern, hypothermia. We do know of two men rushed to hospitals this afternoon. When you're saying both men will be okay. If you're wondering, can I catch the bus in the morning? The answer is yes. Pat buses are running on a snow emergency schedule, which means they're only going on the main roads and the busway. No use trying to get up those snowy, steep side streets. To get specific information on your route and your neighborhood, call the Port Authority hotline at 442-2000. That's 442-2000. This storm is leaving lots of bus and plane passengers in an extended state of standby. Rod Rassman has their story. This is one fortunate foursome. After more than a day of delay, they're finally home here yeah. in Pittsburgh. I wanted to come back yesterday, but the snowstorm hit this place, and we had to stay back there for one more night. And they're certainly not alone. In fact, hundreds of bus passengers all over the east are still waiting for buses, and that includes Pittsburgh. But look at the terminals tonight. There aren't that many people here, but looks can be deceiving. You see, most of the people have been put up in hotels. At least 60 of them are still stranded. Same story here at the airport. All the screens seem to read the same. Delayed or canceled, especially if you're headed east, like this man, who's been trying for two days to get from Phoenix to Baltimore. I think I'm about ready to turn around and go back to Phoenix. Anyone heading out east, they do have a long wait ahead of them. I just got this weather update. According to it, anyone heading to Baltimore, LaGuardia, Boston, D.C., all those airports are not accepting any flights until at the earliest 4 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. Rod Rashman, Channel 4 Action News, Pittsburgh International Airport. Even if you're not heading east, you should check to make sure your flight is on time. Pittsburgh International is still dealing with a backlog of flights because of all the snow. Keep your TV locked right here. We do have some serious breaking news coming up. Also, we'll have the school closings and cancellations continuing next on Action. And Joe will join us from the Weather Center with his up-to-the-minute DiNardo forecast. We'll explain how the snow could mean relief for people who owe back taxes. And look at this. Uh, oh, winter games will take you where it's warm. It's coming up. That's it. Six straight on home ice.
Knights of the Pittsburgh Penguins. I'm Andrew Stocky at the arena. Highlights of the latest Penguin victory coming up on Action Sports. Some people are... Action News at 11 is everywhere. Live with Sally Wiggin, Scott Baker, Weather Watch with Chief Meteorologist Joe Donato, and Action Sports with Andrew Stockey. Action News continues. Right now, we do want to get to that breaking story just into our newsroom. Police are investigating a triple shooting at the Liberty Park high-rise in East Liberty. We understand one person is in critical condition. Police and paramedics are on the scene. The East Liberty high-rise is the very same apartment building where two fires broke out in the 10 days. Two people died in the first fire. Well, the government shutdown may technically be over, but federal workers got an extra day off today because of the storm. The snow certainly crippled the nation's capital. Almost all federal offices were closed, even the post office. The snowman meets the tax man. The snowman wins. Pennsylvania's tax amnesty program was set to wrap up on Wednesday, but because of the weather, Delinquent offenders now have until Friday to pay up. Even then, the snow can't save We'll go to court if we have to. We'll file criminal charges against them if they're operating without a license uh, that's been revoked because they haven't paid their taxes. We're going to be much more uh, ready to utilize those really drastic measures that are available to us. And you can define drastic this way. They'll pass, heap on the fines, and maybe even revoke your license. A trip around the world topping our news around the world. Steve Fawcett is trying to set a record. The Chicago Securities trader left South Dakota this morning on a balloon trip to circle the earth. Bill Clinton praised his strong and principled leadership. Francois Mitterrand, the longtime president of France, died today of prostate cancer at 79. Defense Secretary William Perry joined Israeli officials today announcing a $500 million deal to jointly develop a missile defense system. Ryutaro Hashimoto will be the next prime minister of Japan. The 58-year-old is a tough trade negotiator. 400 fans turned out in Oregon today to welcome free Willy star Keiko just off the jet from Mexico City. Experts hope spacious new quarters will help his health. And get ready for a new high-tech toilet from Japan. The Zoe has a water warmer, heated seats, and remote control. What's a remote control for? A Zoe will cost you 600 bucks. Maybe he's got a CD player. I don't know. As far as I know, kids charge whatever they can to shovel driveways. Will the sun melt any of the snow away anytime soon? The Donardo forecast coming up on Action News. Coming up, sharing the grief. It's worse in other places. And we'll get you caught up on some other news. Police race to the HOV. Something went wrong again. And your feedback from Mount Vernon and Elizabeth and Beachview also coming up. It's your newscast, too. That's why we want you to tell us what you think. Leave us your thoughts, your objections, your suggestions on our Action News feedback line, and we'll play them back at the end of our newscast. Call 1-800-WTAE for news. In Germany, there is no word for gonzo. No word for rad, righteous, or gnarly. And as far as we can tell, no word for whoa. There is, however, a car. Introducing the Audi A4, a stunning achievement in German engineering. And one wicked ride. Dude, the new A4. Get ready for the ride of your life. Sights and sounds of high performance are brought to you by Crystal Clear Amico Ultimate Premium Gasoline. Formulated without certain harmful impurities, it's the fuel that can motivate some of the world's most renowned performance vehicles. Crystal Clear Amico Ultimate. The real difference between Wendy's 99 cent super value menu and every place else is right here. We make everything fresh, so it ends up being more delicious. We bake our potatoes in the oven. 
the way you do. Every salad is prepared fresh. And our chili, we make it up fresh every day. Plus, our hamburgers are never frozen. We make them with fresh beef, and you get them right off the grill. So they're hotter and juicier. Wendy's 99 cent super value menu, the difference is in the food. Other places can copy the price. They can't copy this. We can take comfort in the fact that other people got it worse than we did. The winter storm walloped the folks at Philadelphia, so much so they called in the National Guard more than 30 inches of snow on the ground. Blowing snow buried countless cars. In Louisville, they're not used to a fast-moving, powerful winter storm, so the governor declared a state of emergency. People woke up to 28 inches of snow. Shoveling was a lonely job. In New York City, it is the third worst winter storm on record, nearly two feet of snow. They had to cancel school for the first time in a decade. Both of the major airports in New York are closed. There are snow plows, but no planes on the runways. Now follow the camera zoom. That is a boat stuck in Lake Erie off the coast of Cleveland. The U.S. Coast Guard says they can't cut it free, so the Canadian Coast Guard is on the way. Ah, uh, just to be cruel. <laughs> the place to be this week, Los Angeles. Sunny and 75 on the beach. Perfect for getting a tan, playing volleyball, surfing. Hardly ever a winter storm there. Now, Chief Meteorologist Joe DiNardo and tonight's Weather Watch. L.A. Civic Center out there in L.A. Not bad, 80 degrees today. Oh, Got the earthquakes to deal with out there. Too yeah, hot. That's true, that's true. Tomorrow morning at wake up, uh, not too bad a condition, but mostly cloudy skies. A temperature of 19 degrees, and today in Pittsburgh, a well below normal day. Our low, 9 degrees. The afternoon high reached 23, and that put us 10 and 1 half degrees below those normals currently. International airport, sky condition is overcast. Ceilings based at 10,000 feet. The visibility, 15 miles. Current temperature 16 degrees, humidity 74%, southwest surface wind at 13 miles per hour. That's a wind chill of 10 below zero. And a barometer, that's falling, 29.92 hundredths of an inch of mercury, corrected to sea level. Here's a storm coming in off the west coast that we'll take a look at come Thursday night and Friday. Now clouds in through the northwestern Great Lakes, northeastern plains. You can see south of that quite a bit of clear skies this evening. As you move on up into the Pittsburgh district, we've had these scattered, broken to overcast conditions on and off over the past several hours, but a beautiful day. Last night at this time, while it was still snowing, and then rapidly, that activity around 5 this morning moved rapidly on off to the east, and you can see Boston now just on the edge of the snow. They're about finished, and uh, we have clouds to the west in our area gradually moving in. Nothing showing up on local radar. At 11 o'clock tonight, still temperatures on the cold side. The cold spot is Bradford, 11 degrees, Dubois, 13, 12, Johnstown. Pittsburgh and Youngstown, 16 degrees, 16 at Morgantown. As you get on north near the lakes, a little warmer, 17 at Cleveland and 19 at Erie. Summary of radar sites, here's that activity just moving off the coast of Maine right now as it continues to move east. And you can see an area developing now through Wisconsin, Minnesota, and northwestern sections of Illinois. That's with this next front that's north of the lakes moving southeast. We'll have some of this activity in our area tomorrow. Temperatures kind of chilly, especially the eastern half of the country, you go on south, in the middle 30s already, they're going to be below freezing down in Orlando. And uh, Miami will get down to a low tomorrow morning of about 38 degrees as you go on west, warms up just a bit. Inland though, it's still a bit on the cool side. Here's the latest surface map. Had some sunshine quite a bit today, high pressure down south. But this frontal system up to the north is gradually moving southeastward, and the flow pattern up north now is out of the northwest. So that'll take this front, slowly move it southeastward over the next 24 hours. And our clouds will be on the increase overnight. And with a frontal system in our area during the day tomorrow and tomorrow night, there will be snow shower activity tomorrow. And it'll be continuing through tomorrow night. And with northwesterly flow, temperatures are going to continue to be below normal for the next several days. Forecast for tonight, clouds will be on the increase. It'll be cold, the low 15 degrees. But that temperature will begin rising before daybreak. Now tomorrow, the uh, low pressure center and the frontal system up north will be moving towards the south and east. And as it moves on south and east, we'll have quite a bit of cloud cover in the district tomorrow. Also, temperatures will be on the cold side. And here comes that next frontal system in through the Rockies. And this is one we'll be looking at Thursday night and Friday. But for tomorrow, mostly cloudy, breezy, and cold. We'll have snow showers developing in the morning. And tomorrow's high, 29 degrees. On Tuesday night, mostly cloudy, breezy, and cold with snow showers continuing a low of 19 degrees. Snow accumulation with these snow showers tomorrow through tomorrow night, 
uh, accumulating locally an inch or two, little higher amounts to the north and east into the mountains. Then on Wednesday, that front is south and east. We'll have morning flurries, variable cloudiness and cold. Wednesday's high, 26 degrees. Take a look at Thursday on the extended. Clouds will be on the increase once again, and it'll be cold with some snow coming in here Thursday night, a high of 30 degrees on Friday, cloudy with periods of snow and a high of 32 degrees. Saturday, mostly cloudy and cold. We'll have snow flurries. Saturday's high, 32 degrees. And if things work properly, we may have a fairly decent Sunday for the ball game, but that's still about six days away. All we'll right. check that. All right. I'm confident. All right, thank you, Joe. And we are going to check the school closings. As you see right now, they are picking up. The hiking trip ended when the young teen tumbled, and now to the rescue. Now, lifting the stretcher was one thing. How about the rescue guy there hanging on? And it was a long, high flight over Echo Canyon, Arizona. Away they went. Now, this high wire act went on and on for about two minutes till they arrived at the nearby parking lot and made the safe landing. Mm. And a bit of a fright for passengers on a U.S. air jet bound for Pittsburgh. It had to make an emergency landing in West Virginia when it lost cabin pressure. That's U.S. Air's third unscheduled landing in nine days. None of the 20 passengers on this jet out of Knoxville, Tennessee, was injured. From trouble in the skies to trouble again in the HOV and again in I-279. This gate near Three Rivers was up early this morning when it should have been down, barring outbound traffic. At this point, uh, it appears that uh, some, somebody uh, between 4 o'clock in the morning and 6 o'clock in the morning may have operated the gate uh, unauthorized. Luckily, lots of snow meant few cars this morning. PennDOT is investigating what went wrong, but right now doesn't know what happened. More local news now, county by county. Uniontown, Fayette County, a costly barn fire that fire officials now say looks suspicious. The fire at the Rocky Top Stables in North Union killed 13 show horses, five dogs, and two cows. Jeanette Westmoreland County, no one has claimed a $5,000 reward in a fatal arson case there. That fire killed Gina Young and her children. Her husband, Jimmy Young, was convicted of setting it. Her parents had offered the reward. Pittsburgh, Allegheny County, a stabbing victim dies from complications eight months after the attack. And the man accused of the stabbing is now charged with murder. Lewis Dunning died Saturday of bronchial pneumonia. Kevin Easley was first arrested in June for the attack. Today, he was rearrested for murder. And Robert Dewey Hoskins could get 11 years in prison for stalking and terrorizing Madonna. Pop star praised the jury's quick verdict in Los Angeles this evening. Hoskins, 38 and homeless, showed no reaction as the verdicts were read. Madonna said the outcome shows the system can and does work. Kind of a snowy start to championship week. The countdown to kick off ahead on Action News. Icy conditions, perfect for the Penguins. We'll have the night. And how about the folks who braved the snow only to be locked out of their new jobs? Woman Care is brought to you by McGee Women's Hospital and Keystone Health Plan West, a Blue Cross and Blue Shield HMO. Polycystic ovarian syndrome is characterized by uh, irregular ovulation, obesity, abnormal hair growth, and uh, abnormal bleeding. In women who are not interested in becoming pregnant, um, oral contraceptive pills are, are often prescribed to prevent um, abnormal uterine bleeding and also to prevent endometrial cancer. And women who are interested in becoming pregnant, uh, ovulation uh, medication can be given. We are, we're finding that women who have this syndrome have increased risk of heart disease and also the fact that they have pre-diabetic conditions and insulin resistance. Because of these risk factors, it's important for women to be followed closely. For free brochures concerning this and other health topics, visit the Health Place Center nearest you or call 641-4016. Making you feel good. That's what having the blues is all about. And that's why we're making sure the service you get is better than ever. We've extended our phone hours. We're putting information right at your fingertips and service representatives right in your neighborhood. We're even building health centers to make your life easier. No wonder everyone wants the blues. Having the blues never felt so good. Some hospitals look at health from a woman's perspective for about nine months. When the nine months are up, where do you go for the rest of your life? 
McGee Women's Hospital offers care, treatment, and education for all phases of a woman's life, from pregnancy through motherhood to menopause and beyond. At McGee Women's Hospital, woman care lasts a lifetime. Live with Andrew Stuckey, this is Channel 4 Action Sports. Andrew is here, full schedule here. Yep, yep, I mean, we're so excited we can't stand it. We're, we're ready to wear black and go to bed tonight. You almost wish they would kick it off. Pajamas? Hour, yeah. <laughs> Speaking of black and gold, our countdown to a black and gold kickoff stands at six days with a Monday mood from both camps and a snowy start to the AFC Championship Showdown. More on Steelers tonight. <laughs> No one celebrated the Colts' victory more than the Steelers. It meant another playoff game at home. Now comes the hard part, taking advantage. Just, just to be able to play another AFC Championship game here after what you know happened last year. And I think just getting a chance to redeem ourselves, I think we're going to go out and try and take the full advantage of the opportunity because it doesn't happen too often. The Steelers are a year older, and they say a year wiser, having learned from last year's championship collapse. I think the lesson uh, that we learned last year is we can't take teams for granted. Uh, when we get up on teams, we have to put them away. Uh, not celebrate and not do the, uh, the recording thing, the video thing. We're not doing all that stuff. We're getting down to serious business this week. While the Steelers show resolve, the Colts are reveling in their success. And they're not ready to wake up from this dream season. You visualize playing the AFC Championship. You visualize at least getting a shot at playing in the Super Bowl. And uh, you wouldn't want it no other way. And, um, so, you know, I have to pinch myself every once in a while. Come Sunday, the Colts will be battling much more than just the Steelers. They'll be fighting history and the elements. You see, no team that plays in a dome has ever been to the Super Bowl. Add to that the Steelers' five-game win streak in the series and the Colts' winless record at Three Rivers, and the outcome seems obvious, but not to the Colts. It's the size of the heart of the football team that makes the difference, not where you're playing or, how, or, or where you're playing. All these other stats are meaningless in our estimation. And our countdown to kick off for the championship game continues tomorrow for the coach. Bill Cower has his news conference while his troops will take tomorrow off. Meantime, the weather outside is frightful, but that didn't stop 14,000 Penguin fans from making their way to the Igloo. Tonight's visitors, the Vancouver Canucks. Feeling well-rested, Mario Lemieux was in uniform tonight, and the Penguins' offense was clicking. Here, Sergei Zubov rips one from the point, and it's a goal. Later in the first game, tied at two all, Peter Nedved on the breakaway, deeks to his right, and you can count that one. Brian Smolinski would also score the first of his two goals, this one from Nasland and Lemieux. And the Penguins hang on to win it, and win it convincingly, 8-5, to five, the final at the Igloo. 45 seconds, we, we knew uh, Vancouver's coming in. They had a nice little um, winning streak going. Uh, it was a good old-fashioned shootout, if you want to put it that way. But, uh, you know, we prevailed. We got the two points, and, um, you know, we got some things yet to work on. Uh, you know, we have a lot of young guys uh, that are playing real well and, and doing the little things right. Back to football now, which tops the sports wire. Three-time Super Bowl MVP and Monongahela native Joe Montana will handle the coin toss for the Super Bowl. In hoops, the Pitt-Georgetown game for tomorrow is on, despite the weather. Civic Arena game time, 7.30. And Pirate fans can get up-to-date info on the team, even shop for Bucks merchandise, thanks to a new Bergball website. The address, www.pirateball.com. And for the first time in 25 years, no one was voted into Baseball's Hall of Fame. That's right. Nobody yeah. got the 75%. Baseball's Hall of ne Infamous, never mind. <laughs> All right, thank we'll you. have action news in a moment. First, we do have the preview of what's coming up next on Nightline. I'm Cokie Roberts. Coming up on Nightline, they vowed to keep the government shut down until the president gave them a balanced budget plan. Now that's all changed. The inside story of why the Republicans blink tonight. Some people are doing more business than ever on Fridays. The Denver deal doable, Donnie? Good. Help your business do more business with Sprint's amazing offer. For one full year, Fridays are free. No, I'll call you back. It's Friday. Every long-distance call you make on Fridays is free. The rest of the week, you get Sprint's great low flat rate. Okay, Sue, I'll call you next Friday. Call now. 1-800-598-5000. Don't miss another free Friday. Only from Sprint Business. Here's new croissant pockets from Hot Pockets brand. Let's try it. Let's stuffed to the brim with fabulous fillings like chicken and broccoli. That's incredible. Or ham and cheddar. Mmm. 
in a tender, flaky crust. Mmm, I'm in love. Hearty and satisfying like you can't believe. For a tasty hot meal without a big deal. What are you gonna pick? Croissant Pockets. New from the makers of Hot Pockets. Well, come on, steak lovers, lend me your ears. One of the roses in your steakhouse for 30 years. Just to show a little appreciation. We're bringing you a great steak celebration, yeah. Buy the Grand Buffet at the regular price and add a juicy ribeye steak and potato for what it was back in 1965. Only 99 cents. What a meal. It's a steak sensation that's sweeping the nation. We end the program with a beginning. New jobs, first day, prompt employees. Only problem was the major snowstorm. Still, the hand has made the 180-mile trek from Bradford to downtown Pittsburgh today, only to find no boss or anyone else in the office. Because we're going to be taking some new positions with the state. And we were directed to come to Pittsburgh on January 8th and be here in the morning. So we're here, here we in are. the morning, and <laughs> now the doors are closed. So you know what we'll do? We'll get in the car and go back to McKean County. Thank you. Okay. Away they go. Yeah. McKean County, this kind of snow is just, you know, just another spring day. Well, I like their fortitude. I hope they get employee of the month or something, right? <laughs> or get something, a bonus. That's our 11 o'clock report. Thanks for joining us. Our next news tomorrow morning at 5 with Michelle Wright and Mike Clark. They will have, of course, the updated school closing lists and all of those uh, traffic reports, too. Right now, call our feedback line at 1-800-WTA for news. Here's what you're talking about tonight. Helen and I'm calling from Elizabeth. I think it's really wonderful that the governor is on the news now declaring the rest of the day for people to stay home. But I am extremely appalled at these business owners who have called up their employees and have told them that they better come in to work. Pat from Beachview. I enjoyed your coverage on the Beachview snow removal with the director of the public works all the plows do is go up the center of the road they don't even open it up for two cars i'm scared to death to leave my driveway hi this is tina vernon in regard to your citations and state emergencies i think the ones that should be cited should be the companies or employers who had a problem with their employees not coming to work causing them to venture out onto hazardous roads because half the people that were out on the roads were the ones that are afraid of losing their jobs Channel 4 Action News, brought to you by Sprint Business. We help business do more business. Action News is a presentation of WTAE-TV. Channel 4 Action News is everywhere. It's Winterfest 96 at Seven Springs, and even if you're not a ski bum, there's no better place to be. Soak up the alpine atmosphere and get into the fun with snow volleyball. Enter two braces, the craft show, and the beautiful torchlight parade. Then, watch your on-air favorites and local sports superstars compete in the outrageous Celebrity Olympics. Join WGAE-TV when we rock the mountain during Winterfest 96 at 7 Springs. Sponsored in part by Ponderosa and your all-star Jeep Eagle Dealer. Delicate step. Lasting impression. A first look into the world. Your child's first six years shape her life forever, and you provide the stepping stones for roadblocks to success. During the next two years, WTAE-TV and the United Way will present Success by Six. Our commitment to bring you programming focused on children's needs. We'll show you where to turn for the support that can ensure success for your child. Brought to you in partnership with Help America, Giant Eagle, and Eaton Park. The award-winning Operation Football Team rolls on. Watch Operation High School Sports Student Athlete of the Week. Action Sports, Thursday at 6 and 11. Help the hungry. Call the Greater Pittsburgh Community Food Bank, 672-4949.